let's talk about some of the other benefits and special characteristics just for a minute um, regarding the the 10 speed autos and especially as it relates to we are going to get a little bit into our quick 10 system in this segment um, primarily just touching on you know the power handling capability what we've done um, with downshifting pro probably as it relates to and compared to OEM style um, the things that our quick 10 system can do that OEMs cannot and then you know touch on the the fact that we offer a trans brake what can you tell us about that? Well, definitely um, the torque rating of these is 800 Newton meters, which is almost 600 foot pounds. Okay. You know? So you can pretty much expect it to survive, you know, up to 600 foot pounds stock. If it's a fairly fresh, good working transmission when you start. So, you know, that cover a lot of builds. I mean, you know, most, it would cover budget builds. It would cover most everything naturally aspirated. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Until you get into big cubic inches, you know. But sure. anything small block naturally aspirated, this transmission out of the box will work. If you get into power adders and crazy stuff, then you know there, that's going to be a little different story. But I mean, we've got aftermarket support, and obviously, if you've got a big block or a Godzilla motor, and you're making boost with it you know making a lot of power you can easily make 900 foot pounds with an engine like that right a big block chevy with supercharging or a, a godzilla or, or ford big block supercharging is going to make 900 foot pounds once again yeah. aftermarket upgraded components available yeah so it's no yeah. no problem as long as you set the trans up correctly it can handle it People have done it. It can be done. It is being done as we speak with stock applications. And um, this will, will do the trick. And we definitely recommend torque management over about 700 foot pounds. Um, you know, really over 600 foot pounds. We recommend you use our torque which, management feature. Which can be implemented by our Quick 10 standalone system. It has the shift in progress wire. Yeah, and you use that to either cut boost to your boost controller or reduce timing or if you've got some sort of electronic throttle control you can cut back the throttle angle right there, there are different things you could do but yeah you've got ways you can turn the heat down a little bit in those high powered applications and something with you know 400 horsepower none of that's really necessary the shifts have such a small rpm drop they're not violent they don't break things that's another nice thing too. You don't have to worry about U-joints snapping during a yep. full throttle shift or anything. But now it's it's a good package, you know. And it, honestly, if you were faced with the task of rebuilding a like a 4L80E or a 4R70W that broke or wore out and spending the money on that transmission, some of those parts are getting hard to find too. True. We're having a big problem with sourcing connectors and harness pieces for the, the a lot of the four speeds now so that stuff's getting to be about 30 years old and it's harder and harder to keep it going but we we are we're doing everything we can and tooling custom connectors and stuff is needed um but if you're faced with the cost of rebuilding one of those or buying one of these some of these are pretty inexpensive i mean yeah. i think this one was fifteen hundred dollars from a local wrecking yard and it's, you know, practically brand new. And so $2,000 or less can get you a, a good transmission that is much stronger than a 470W or 4L60E. Definitely not even the same league. Yeah, out, out of the box, yeah. yeah. So, you know, you, you might be way ahead just swapping to one of these. And of course, you know, this bolts up to all the Ford modulars, Coyote, with that bolt pattern, you know, and you can get the flex plate I mentioned earlier from Suncoast. Sure. That is custom made to bolt to a six bolt crankshaft modular engine. So you're covered on that. Um, Not to mention all the, uh, the adapters that are available. Exactly, big block Ford, small block Ford, our buddy Josh, he's got all that covered. Um, it, it, uh, trans, it, um, performanceadapters.com. Yeah, Ford FE, Wide Block. Yeah, we carry their stuff, and they have a wide range of engines. And 
We're always putting a bug in his ear about new stuff. He's working on uh, Ford 73 Power Stroke to uh, like 6R140, 10R140. So we're going to go down that path in, in the near future as well. And I think a lot of people will be excited about that. But the beauty of this is, this is the LT pattern, of course, because these were only used with LT engines. As you can see, it's the six bolt converter and some GMs are three, so you don't have to use all six. All these bolt holes in the dowel locations line up perfectly. Um, and this one as well, which these are all shared with small block Chevy, you know, traditional Gen 1, Gen 2 engines. The top bolt hole, for the LT engines moved over to the passenger side slightly. It used to be at the very peak. This will bolt right up to any LS or LT engine as is without any modifications, adapter free. And we're gonna work on adapters, especially for small block and big block Chevy. We'd like to see these behind, you know, 454s. And, sure. And, you know, even old 350s and stuff. And we're going to try to support the uh, smaller versions, the 10 speeds too, in that, in that vein, the, the 10R60, 10L60. Yeah, that would come in like the new Ford Ranger pickup truck. Yeah, yeah, and the, the Cadillacs and the V6 Camaros use those. And they're fairly strong. They're not as strong as these, but the back half, this is where your tunnel clearance problems are going to happen. Um, obviously, the bell housing is not going to be a problem, but... As you get back here, those are a little smaller in the back because the planetary sets are smaller. The clutches are a little bit smaller in the back half, like the E-clutch. So we feel there's utility in supporting those transmissions as well, so you don't have to hack up the tunnel and older stuff that didn't have you know, the large tunnel space. This has quite a bit of tunnel space, interestingly enough, so I think we can avoid any major modifications there, but we'll cover that when we in the next video with that car. What, what can you tell us about what you've done with the quick 10 controls as it relates to downshifting? Um, Cause that, I, know, I know that you worked on that extensively. That was a big area because honestly, I really wasn't happy with what we had out of the get go. There are certain factory vehicles that have terrible downshift characteristics. You owned one of them until we put a 10 speed in it. Right. Yeah. That, for, he's he's referring to the 5R55S, I believe. Yeah, it yeah. It was in my 2005 those, Mustang, and you would you would mat the throttle, rolling at 50 miles an hour, and it was count a, to three, and one then you Mississippi, might go down two to, Mississippi, and then you'd yeah. get a downshift. <laughs> it it was the most. I'm not sure what they were thinking. It was the most terrible. Transition. Some of you out there may be able to relate to that, and this is the solution. So. Well, with 10 gears, you can't dilly dally on the downshifts. I mean, because you know, if you're you're in ninth gear and you want to be in third gear and you don't want to be there next week. Yeah. So you got to get there quickly. Yeah. Um, so there's two different things that have to be considered, how quickly the shift actually happens and how many steps. Can you get right to the gear you want to go to or do you have to go through three other gears to get there? Every gear in a downshift can be accomplished in one or two steps. So in some cases it has to go through an intermediate gear like if you're going from 10th gear to third gear actually 10-2 is one step but there's a map that says what can happen in one step or two steps and um, we basically optimized it so it's always the most fewest number of steps and we optimize the scheduling of it so as you're pushing your foot down you, know, you might be stroking the accelerator pedal when you're about 50% throttle, and it says, oh, I want to go to fourth gear, but you really want to be in second or third. So then it starts that downshift, and then you keep going down further on the pedal, so that shift has to finish, and you start the next one. So we've fixed all that, so it, it's more looking at it more intelligently, Yeah, and tries to go right to the destination gear immediately, or in as few steps as possible. It is better than most OEM applications, if not all of oh, them. That, well, that's our main focus because we're all about performance. We're all about drivability and, and driving enjoyment, you know. And well, this is really important for people that aren't aware or that are new to this or that don't know or that were thinking about doing this swap. I've, I've had the question asked, you know, if I'm in 10th gear or if I'm in 9th gear, does it have to step down? 
between every gear to get to a certain point? And you just, the answer is no. It can go directly from, give an example, seventh to second. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that's a one-step shift. Yeah. yeah, and I've experienced it, and it's awesome. Yeah. Oh, it, it is. It's amazing. Yeah. So no, it does not. It does not step down. If that's what you're thinking, that's kind. Of, but when we got into this years ago, that's kind of what I assumed. It would need to naturally step down because that's what other transmissions do. Yeah. Well, all the shifts in this transmission are one step for one or two gears, but then there's some other one steps beside that. So if you're going like first to third, third to first. You know, third to fifth, those are all one step. So you can go to every two gears automatically. But then when you get beyond that, there's only certain places you can go. Yeah. It's kind of a map. But but that was a big thing because when I first was driving this, I mean, it was very crude because I was using our old hardware with hacked on circuitry to talk to the speed sensors and everything else. Right. And... Um, it was just a first thing that worked. And I drove that for about a year because we had to make the new product before we could actually sell this. So there were several steps we had to go through in this process. But um, while I was driving that, I just had the downshift super simplistic where it was stepping every gear. Yeah, it wasn't as painful as the 5R55S, but it was close. Right, right. Because you, you want to pass somebody and you'd have to wait. Well, the, bo the bottom line is the Quick 10 in its current configuration, and it's only going to get better, but it's really good now. Um, it's going to have you in the right gear that you want to be in, that the car wants to be in for maximum acceleration and performance, and, and it's not going to bang your teeth or... No, no. It, we... it, it's, not a, it's not a violent sensation. It just goes where it needs to be. Well, what we had for the 6R80 was good. But that's one of the reasons why it took us so long to get this product ready. We didn't want to release something that was half-baked. So we spent a lot of extra effort making sure downshifts and things like that were optimal. Because yep. that becomes even more important with so many more gears. Um, so that was one of the big focus areas. But yeah, having lived through it, downshifting one step at a time, which that was just a temporary hack anyway. But... Yeah, I, I saw both sides of it, and I, w I wanted to make sure it was the best it could possibly be when we got it out there. Well, it is. Um, I drove my car yesterday, and I just continue to be impressed with it. Now, you decided to integrate a trans brake into this as well, just like you did with Yeah, the just like we did with Quick 6, yeah. So there's no nothing else to buy. You need a push button, a push button to ground or power and a piece of wire. You don't have to take the, the pan off. No. Um, it's all electronic. Nothing to install, no valve body modifications. It's it's ready to go, and it works in first, second, or third gear. Amazing. Got, I didn't even know that. Yeah. So we, we have the ability to start in second or third gear. We haven't used the third gear option yet, but we're going to make that available in the tuning, tuning software to people. So that's included. So, if you purchase a Quick 10 system from us, you are going to have trans brake capability. If you choose to connect the button and activate it in the software, it will work. It absolutely will work, yeah. And it definitely enhances the experience and, and definitely helps at the drag strip too. So. That's huge. I mean, that's like a separate product in and of itself. Yeah, it is. So that that's one good thing. And So a lot of the complaints that I've heard, rumors, whatever you want to call them, is hunting. Because there are 10 speeds, because there are 10 gears, you'll hear people complain that it, they feel like it's hunting or it never knows what gear to be in. That's only in OEM applications, certain ones, sometimes. That, that is not the case with our controller. There is no hunting. No, actually with more gears, in theory, there should be less hunting because you can get the ideal gear for whatever situation you're in. But right. yeah, there... There were tons of firmware updates in the Ford and GM stuff the first few years. So most of the recalls and things you've heard about have been, you know, related to software updates more so than anything in the transmission. Right. You will not experience, you know, wishy-washy, um, inconsistent, going back and forth. That, that does not happen. It's always in the right gear at the right time. 
And the OEM stuff, to their credit, they have a lot more things to consider than we do. You know, sure. we're not designed for soccer moms. We like soccer moms, but we're not designing <laughs> the product, you know, for minivans or anything. Right. So we're, um, you know, trying to make the product optimal for our situation. But there's so many tables in the factory stuff to consider so many different, almost seemingly irrelevant things that they need to consider. And that can cause hunting and stuff. But ours, the um, gear selection is primarily based on engine speed, output shaft speed, and where your foot is. So unless your foot's hunting, the transmission won't be hunting. Yeah, we can't guarantee anything if, if, you, if you're having a spasm or something like that in your leg. And you're, <laughs> or and you're, you're going over a rocky trail. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you're moving the accelerator pedal back and forth at a rapid pace, then... <laughs> We can't promise you it's not going to hunt. I can tell you off-road sometimes it's very hard to keep your foot steady. Yeah, yeah. In certain cases, yeah.